Hi everyone, welcome to a game called Death Wish. This is a visual novel made for Spooktober Jam. Um, also, there's mentions of morality, death, obviously, and tripod phobia. So, just be careful and stuff. Don't get triggered. Let's go ahead and start. The first thing I noticed was the silence. No breeze stirring the leaves, no birds singing in the branches, no twigs snapping underfoot tiny paws. Right. Well, can you go to the next sentence, please? Nothing but the sounds I bring with me. How do I go to the next one without using my mask? Ah, uh, and enter. The crunch of dirt with every step. The steady pulse of my own heartbeat. The quiet breaths cascading into the air as a cloud. Then I notice the cold. It stings my nose and fingers and covers me in goosebumps. The last thing I notice is that I don't remember how I got here. Actually, I don't remember anything at all. Doesn't matter. I can figure out that when I'm in, out of this forest. I walk down the path. Oh, I get to choose. So let's go ahead and make a save. Right. When we go back, let's go left. Am I the only living thing in this forest? I should have heard something by now. I try to focus on anything besides the quiet. I look around for the frog. The mishap and rocks scatter around the ground and the vines growing up the trees. I realize everything looks like a nightmare. I try not to focus on that either. I keep walking, staring ahead at the spot where the path disappears in the fog. My feet carry me as though they know no other purpose. Keep walking, one foot in front of the other. Oh no. I wonder if it's in the end, if it's going to matter where I actually go. I'm gonna keep going left though. Why does that rock look familiar? And that bush, I swear I've seen it before, but I know I've never been here before. Right? I don't remember ever being in this forest, but then again, I don't remember anything. How long have I been walking? Am I going somewhere? And just got lost. What time is it? I look up, but the moon doesn't have any answers. It remains constant like fog. I just want to go home. Where is home? My pace slows. And I keep going left, because I feel like that's the wrong direction. I can't get caught up in that now. Not while I'm still here. But where is here? How did I get here? Why can't I remember anything? Who am I? I stop and look down at my hands. I can see them, but there's a nagging feeling in the back of my mind. It says that I'm wrong, and I know that it's right. These hands aren't really there. I'm not really there. I am only a shadow. Have I always been like this? Have I always been here? Can I... Can I go back? Go forward. No, I can't go back. I may not know who or even what I am right now. But I know I'll get answers if I keep going forward. I press on for the forest for a moment longer. Until the silence is broken. Are you lost, little one? I freeze. Hello? Quite a curious finding a soul traveling these woods, alone and afraid, and a shadow. I would help you if you wish it. My head begins to nod before I can think. Where are you trying to get to, little one? Home. 
Do you believe that that is where you are going? Or are you simply wandering through a forest? I pause for a moment to consider. The voice is right. I have no idea where I'm going. I... I don't know. The voice doesn't respond. Who are you? You cannot know me until you know yourself. Uh, what? Do I know this voice? Do I know you? You have known me for quite some time. Are you me? Then what's your name? What is yours? I... I don't remember. I don't... I can't bring myself to say it out loud. The thought feels like a knife in my stomach. My vision begins to blur as tears cascade down my cheeks. I don't know what my name is. I don't know where my home is. I don't know who I am. Are you, you are crying. Its voice is quiet. I can almost see the head tilt that accompanies the, the words. I look behind me, and there's only the dense forest, the unrelenting fog, and the bitter cold. The voice is right. I am wandering through a forest. How can I find home if I don't know where it is? How can I find home if I don't even know who I am? Why do you cry, little one? Because I... Well, let's go ahead and save right here too, huh? I don't know who I am. I can't remember a single thing about myself. The air is still for a moment. Then I feel a gentle brush against my cheek. A clawed fingertip carrying a tenderness that betrayed the haunting, unholy creation in front of me. It traces my skin as though I was something to be worshipped. His voice was deep before, but now it's a low rumble far too tender to come from the horror before me. I know. You were never meant to stay. It wipes my tears with a thumb. It feels smooth and cold, like metal brushing against my cheek. You've been here far too long already. Where? Where is here? My home, I bid you welcome. The being steps away from me, the remnants of my heartache still glistening on its claws. Your home. I look around at the forest, still silent, cold, and terrifying. It makes sense that something like this would live here. It's lovely. Lies do not become us. Come, I will guide you. It turns and continues down the path I was walking. This will lead me home, right? It hesitates. It has no expression, no eyes, no lips with which to smile or frown, but I feel the fog of the forest thicken with something that mirrors my own lingering sorrow. Yes, I follow it. The forest remains still, cold and silent. The only sounds come from the leaves and the twigs crunching and crackling beneath our feet. It doesn't speak another word until I do. I decide to ask again the only question that matters. Who am I? You will learn with time, little one. How will I learn if you won't tell me anything? With time. It takes a left, then the path forks again. The trees here are even more dense, thick as the thaw that covers the underbrush like a blanket. Then, as I take another step, a faint light begins to shine ahead of us. It hangs in the air, drifting lazily in the non-existent breeze. A shimmering glow, wi glowing wisp. Then another, and another. The longer I look, more of it seem to appear around us. What? They seem to dance in the stillness of the forest, the glow of their forms painting it in a, beautif 
and the beauty that defies the darkness surrounding us. I wish I could see it. Then the creature in front of me speaks again in a voice so quiet, so soft. They have missed you. It doesn't stop walking or offer further explanation. Missed me? It doesn't answer and I don't ask again. If it wants to tell me more, it would have done so. The wisps follow us. They accompany us like lanterns and gentle guides, nudging the mist around them and to part it. Some brush against me as they do, and it's a sense of belonging when I feel the warmth of their grow on my sh own shadowed skin. I quietly thank them for their comforting warmth, and the creature shifts its head as though to hear me better. I reach out and grab one, gentle cage, gently caging it in between my fingers. I hold it against my chest, a beautiful reprieve from the forest's ceaseless chill. The creature shifts its head even more, as though to still a glance. They have missed you, it said. I want to ask it more questions. It knows who I am. It knows I don't, and I don't, but I can't bring myself to ask again. The quiet rumble of its voice breaks the stillness around us once again. The trees are doing well. I look up at the canopy. The night sky is hidden behind the leaves. Rays of moonlight pierce through the spaces between the branches like rainfall. Serpentine vines strangle each tall tree trunk. Looking now, it's not quite so frightening. It's beautiful in a forbidden sort of way. Then I hear something. The lazy lapping of water against stones as it weaves its way through the forest. It's a creek. It makes me homesick, and I ache for something I can no longer remember. Do you wish to touch the water? Oh, this is an option, a save. No, I shake my head. I would rather go home. You said you would take me there, and I will. The thing turns and walks away, continuing down the path. Will we be there soon? It doesn't answer for a long moment. Hello? If I answered, would it ease your fear? Would you be able to tell its truth or its falsehood? I think about that for a moment before accepting that this creature is probably right. I don't answer, but the silence doesn't last long. Instead, it asks its own question. How would you describe your home? It repeats the word slowly to itself as mulling over my answer. What, what's wrong with safe? The being begins to chuckle softly. Safety is a fickle thing. One cannot receive their final wound from anywhere, no matter their precaution. And one can emerge unharmed when walking through fire. Tell me, do you feel safe now? Uh, in fact, I do. What are you going to say? Honestly, yes. You've led me this far, and you've been nothing but kind. I don't know what it is, but something in me wants to trust you. Its hollow gaze turns towards me. This part of the trail is hazardous. Take my hand. It reaches behind itself, extending a cloth-covered palm. It's a beckoning motion of an air of expectations, but the movement is slight, hesitant. I press my own hand on top of the creature's. Its claws wrap around me. The bone chills the surface of my skin. And then I am else somewhere else. I, I am in a memory. It's coated in a blanket of warmth and my own laughter, a distant, faded sense of belonging. 
The creature didn't laugh alongside me in the memory, but the air was lighter and the fog less imposing. The mist surrounding me as it does in the present moment and the clouds from the past held me in a loving embrace. Do you remember? The being's hand cradled my own in the same way it guided me across the path, gentle and reverent. A parallel between past and present. A moment repeated endlessly. Do I remember? The memory fades and I'm left with a deep, unknowing ache. I have been here. The creature's hand tightens around mine, just barely. An imperceptible whisper. But despite the lack of rocks, roots, or vines grasping at stumbling feet, the being doesn't let its hand fall as we walk. Instead, there's a quiet question that permeates the air, an unspoken desire made near tangible. It wants to hold on to me. I... We're gonna save here again. I want it too. It's... It's comforting. Its skin is cold like snow. Its fingers tickle the back of my hand like pencil scratching a leather. As we walk, my eyes trace the trees nearest to the path. The forest doesn't seem as bleak as before, and something about this creature puts me at ease. But then I look at my hand, and I remember that th this thing leading me doesn't have hands. It has claws. I want to pull away, but you've become hesitant. Yes, I understand. It's silent for a moment as it looks somewhere distant. When it finally speaks again, its voice is a sad murmur. My home was much worse once. It was a desolate, empty place. Without warmth. Without safety. Without... Without life. It must be unsettling how time can make ruin of all creation. It comes unbidden bearing its permanent gift of change, and there's nothing to be done but to accept it. Yet, despite the change, here we are. Tell me, little one, if you could make your own change to this place, what would it be? Alright. No, um, this one. Warmth and safety. I think... Every home should have warmth. Mm. There is a coldness here that sinks to ooh, the bones. Even after all this time, I am powerless against it. No harp's fire will survive here now. The darkness suffocates. The fog thickens once more. The melancholy that wraps around the words stop me from finishing my answer. It keeps walking. The forest grows more dense as we travel further down the path. The vines from the tree is abundant, the roots thick with age. This part of the forest is old. I find myself wondering just how old. I ask the creature. I do not know exactly, centuries upon centuries. You said before it was empty. Why is there life in it now? It was a gift. I tilt my head, my brow furrowing. Someone was able to give you a, a gift of life. There's a moment of silence and the creature's shoulders seem to tighten, though its movement almost invisible, and I start to think I imagined it. Yes, someone very important to me. Its tone, is it, it, is it disappointed? But there is no sense in dwelling on the past. What has happened is not what will come to be. Come, the end of the journey grows impatient. I'm almost home. A soft sound comes from the creature. Yes, you are almost home. We walk together in silence. A bro a quiet only broken by sounds of our footsteps. 
I find myself wanting to pry deeper, to ask my own questions, to remember who I am and what this being is. Will you tell me your name now? A deep rumble echoes through the woods, akin to a light chuckle. I have told you, little one. You cannot know me until you know yourself. Ask something else. Mm. Alright. What else do we ask it? Ask about its home. Do you like living here now with all your gifts? Their presence makes it bearable. I'll take that as a no. I think about asking how it was before, but if it's only bearable now, another question. What do you do for fun around here? Fun? Do I appear to be a being of leisure? Then what do you do to pass the time? It looks into the, into the distance again and remains silent. I began thinking with another question, but then it answers. I walk the paths. There are as many routes through my home as stars in the sky. I know them all well. That must be a lonely way to pass time. It was for a long t while. Then your friend gave you the wisp. It makes a sound like a sigh more than a friend. They were the joy of this place, and from that joy came home. Ask another question, little one. I swallowed and looked down at my hands. I almost forgot they were shadows. My next question comes easy to me. The person who gave you the gifts... Um... Oh my gosh, I cannot make any more saves! Oh my gosh, um, I mean, we could always go back to this, so let's go on. What are they like? Answers without hesitation. Beautiful, warm, kind. I meet his gaze and I am met with an intensity that asks something of me. It turns its back and continues walking. Do you miss them? Its pace slows, but it doesn't stop. It looks up as if another, uh, the answer could be found behind the canopy in the clouds. Yes. It's only one soft-spoken word, but the heartache that accompanied it stills the breath from my chest. It was an ache for something lost. It is dark without them. Painful. Yet, what they must endure to come to my home. I never wish it. But they must end, and end, and end, and for their strife, they receive this. The creature gestures broadly at the twilight forest. Some glowing baubles are an ill reward for them. Its head tilts back down. Often they arrive broken, unable to speak or unable to walk or rarely able to move, at all, though. I would hold them and offer what little comfort I could. It turns slightly to glance at me. It's strange how a being made of bone can seem to be in so much pain. I want to cry along with it. How faint memories can become. It speaks as if it to itself now, but the torment in its voice is no less. Instead, it only grows. But I wonder uh, how is this any different? I had thought that the longer path would help, so I went with you. How many times? How many times? How many times must I walk with you only to make you leave? You come broken, hurt. You came without memories, and I see now there is no hope in their return. How many times must I hope for your return? You must remember me. I don't. Once more down the path, you must remember me then. What are you? 
Every wound you take is mine, and I cannot give you another. If I could mend your wounds instead give, of give them, but life is not my domain. I can only bring you to hurt. I must send you back to the world that's on, that has only ever spelled your end. I must, but cannot. Forgive me. Please forgive me. I cannot let you be hurt again. Not ever again. So what you gonna do? Uh, what you gonna do, man? Alright. That's interesting. I have a feeling that the person that they're talking about is me. For some reason. Hold on, we're gonna just go ahead and start again and go right. Okay, let's get right, right, right. No, I cannot go back. Wait, 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 wait. I may not know oh, who or what I am doing right now, but I know I'll get answers if I keep going forward. I press on for the forest for a moment longer until the silence is broken. Are you lost, little one? Yes, I am lost. I freeze. Hello? Quite curious, finding a soul travel these woods. Alone and afraid. And a shadow. I would help you, if you wish it. My head begins to nod before I can think. Where are you trying to get to, little one? Home. Do you believe that that is where you are going? Or are you simply wandering through this forest? I feel like I read this before. But it won't let me skip. I pause for a moment to consider. The voice is right. I have no idea where I'm going. I, I don't know. The voice doesn't respond. Who are you? You cannot know me until you know yourself. You, you come up me with the same stuff, man. The voice is right. I am... Hold on. I'm wandering through the forest. How can I find home if I don't know where he where it is? How can I find home if I don't even know who I am? Why do you cry, little one? Because I Okay. So we're back to this question. I want to go home. I, I just want to go home. I under I understand. And then from the shadows emerged a being, a creature of nightmares. I instinctively take a step back. Well what are you? I am many things. If this creature is many things, then the first among them is frightening. We stare at each other for a long moment until my heart stops pounding and I can make myself speak again. What is this place? The creature gestures to the forest around us. My home, I bid you welcome. Your home. I look around at the forest, still silent, cold, and terrifying. It makes sense that something like this world live here. This, this would live here. It's lovely. Lies do not become us. Come, I will guide you. Well, I feel like I, you get guided me before, man. It turns and continues down the path that I was walking. This will lead me home, right? It hesitates. Yes. It has nothing. Yes, I will touch the water. Am I allowed... The fog lifts almost imperceptibly. Always. Its eyes are on me as I step forward and I let my fingertip brush across the water's surface. Gentle ripples from the wake of my fingers changing the moonlight's reflection into a kaleidoscope of yellow and white. I brush another fingertip, then across, then another, then my palm, and then my hand is submerged beneath the cool, clear water. You are smiling. I am. I hadn't noticed. When I look up at the being, its eyes are intent on me. It stares like it wants to speak. But then it breaks my gaze and it turns away. Will we be there soon? It doesn't answer for a long moment. Hello? If I answered, would it ease your fear? How do you describe your home? Warm. It repeats the word quietly to itself, though there's no hint of surprise in its tone. 
I become more aware of the chill that permeates the air and the seeping shiver filling my lungs with each breath. And then the creature murmurs an apology so faint that the mist threatens to keep it for itself. Then I apologize. Why? I cannot rid this place of its chill, try as I may, however. It raises its hand like gesturing for a bird to land on its finger. Your wisp help. My wisp? Is that why they missed me? Because they're mine. One of the lights flutter around its clawed hand. They are yours because they cannot be mine. They give light and warmth, neither of which belong in my domain. I regret to say I cannot feel them, even feel them. Its hollow gaze turns towards me. This part of the trail is hazardous. So take my hand. I reach behind itself, extending a cloth-covered palm. It's a beckoning motion, an air of expectations, but the movement is slight, hesitant. It did not ask me if I trusted it this time. I press my own hand on top of the tr creatures. Its claws wrap around me. The bone chills the surface of my skin. Wait, oh. It pulls me gently forward and I immediately am thankful for the assistance. Ah, I trip on a tree root in the path. I would have fallen over completely had I not been holding on to this creature's hand. Its hand remains steady as stone as I pull myself back to my feet. I warned you of the hazard. No, you said it was hazardous. There was difference. There's a difference. I fail to understand. You told me that there was danger here. You didn't tell me about that root. I stumbled again. Or that rock. Ah, I understand now. There's a rock. There's a root, there's a rock, there's a rock, there's a rock. There's a rock, there's a rock, there's a root, there's a root, there's a rock, 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 there's a rock. This goes on for five uninterrupted minutes. But despite the lack of rocks, roots, or vines grasping at stumbling feet, the being doesn't let its hand fall as we walk. Instead, there's a quiet question that permeates the air of an unspoken desire made near tangible. It wants to hold on to me. I... I let it go. I look at its hand with daggers where the finger should be. I feel the pricks against the back of my hand, and the thought forces its way to the forefront of my mind. You shouldn't play with knives. It loosens its grip before I can say anything, and my hand slips away. You become hesitant. Yes, I understand. It's, a sil it's silent for a moment, as it looks somewhere distant. When it finally speaks again, its voice is a sad murmur. My home was much worse once. It was a desolate, empty place, without warmth, without safety, without, without life. It must be unsettling how time can make ruin of all creation. It comes unbidden, bearing its permanent gift of change, and there's nothing to be done but accept it. Alright, what would I make a change of? I would put life down. My answer comes without a second thought, the single spoken word leaving my lips before I realized it. It hesitates, and its clawed hand tightens ever so slightly around the deadened branch it used, uses to navigate the path. You would bring life to my home, if I could. It keeps walking. The forest grows more dense as we travel further down the path. The vines from the trees abundant, the roots thick with age. This part of the forest is old. I find myself wondering just how old. I ask the creature... I do not know exactly. Centuries upon centuries. You said before it was empty. Why is there life in it now? It was a gift. I tilt my head, my bro brow furring. Someone was able to give you the gift of life. There's a moment of silence and the creature's shoulders seem to tighten. Though its movement almost invisible, that I start to think I imagined it. Yes, someone very important to me. 
its tone? Is it, is it disappointed? There is no sense in dwelling on the past. What has happened is not what will come to be. Come, the end of the journey grows impatient. Ask about the gifts. I think you have a favorite gift. One could interrupt that as bold. All that has been given to me, from the leaves to the wisps I hold precious. How could I dare claim one as best? I want to believe it, but something about what I just said, or rather how they said it. From the leaves to the wisp, there was love in how it said wisp. You have a favorite, and I know what it is. How very bold indeed. I can hear the smile in its voice. I imitate the creature's tone and cadence. One could be seen, could see it as bold, but I see it as obvious. Then which gift is it? Pray tell. I copy it again. In order to know, you must know yourself. Stop that. I laugh aloud. It echoes through the woods, louder than the siren and sweeter than the hymn. I look at the creature, and it is still looking at me in earnest. The sight makes me giggle more. Here is the, this terrifying beast before me, and I, it wants to know what present I think it likes best. I don't speak my answer. Gently, I reach for one of the floating lights, its warmth welcome in my palm. I look at the creature, meeting its eyeless gaze. We look at one another for a long moment. Correct. Ask another question, little one. I swallow, then look down at my hands. I almost forgot their shadows. My next question comes easily to me. The person who gave you the gifts, will they come back? They do not belong here. Nothing precious belongs here. But yes, they will come again and again until there is nothing left of them to give. That is the way it was and the way it is now and the way it will be until time once more lays waste to what it touches. It turns its back and continues walking. Do you miss them? Its pace slows, but it doesn't stop. It looks up as if the answer could be found behind the canopy in the clouds. Yes, it's only one soft spoken word, but the heartache that accompanies it, it stills the breath from my chest. It was an ache for something lost. It is dark without them. Painful. Yet, what they must endure to come to my home is painful. It turns slightly to glance at me. It's strange how be a being made of bone can seem so much in pain I want to cry along with it. How faint memories can become. It speaks as if to itself now. But the torment in its voice is no less. Instead, it only grows. But I wonder how. Is this any different? I had thought the longer paths would help, so I went with you. How many times? How many times must I walk with you? Only to make you leave. You come broken hurt, and you came without memories, and I see now there is no hope in their return. Is this the same ending? How many times must I return? Must I hope for your return? You must remember me once more down the path. You must remember me then. What are you? Every wound you take is mine, and I cannot give you another. If I could mend your wounds instead of give them, but life is not my domain. I can only bring you to hurt. I must send you back to the world that has only ever spelled your end. He's angry. I must, but cannot. Forgive me. Please forgive me. He did not show me the warmth of my home. I cannot let you be hurt again. It's weird. I took an extremely different route. An even shorter route, in my opinion. We did not see everything he had to offer. And yet, still, I got the same ending. And there are four endings in this game. Um, I want to go back to the... Do you feel safe now? No. Of course not. 
I've forgotten who I am and how I got here and where I'm going. You've been helpful, true, but you're still... I let the statement go and finish. Best not say anything to anger it. Its hollow gaze turns towards me. This part of the trail is hazardous. Take my hand. Extending. A beckoning motion. Do I take it? Yes, I do. Despite telling it, I don't trust it. I still take his hand. The creature hands tighten around my just barely an imperceptible whisper. Take the... The path is smooth once more. I let go of the creature's bony hand and start rubbing warmth back into my fingers. You've become hesitant. Yes, I understand. It's silent for a moment as it looks somewhere distant. When it finally speaks again, its voice is a sad murmur. My home was much worse once. Yes, it was a desolate, empty place and all that stuff. Mm. Warmth and safety. It keeps walking. The forest grows more dense as we travel further down the path. The vines from the trees above the roots thick with age. This part of the forest is old. I find myself wondering how old. I asked the creature. I did not know. I read this. It was a gift. I tilt my head, my brow furrowing. Someone was able to give you a gift of life. Um, there's a moment of silence, and the creature's shoulders seem to tighten. There's a moment, almost invisible, that I start to think I imagined it. Yes, someone very important to me. His tone. Is it... Is it disappointed? But there's no sense in dwelling on the past. What has happened is not what, we, what will come to be. Come, the end of the journey glows impatient. Ask about home. Ask another question, little one. Uh, my next question is... The person gave you... What are they like? Beautiful. Warm. Kind. Yes. I meet its gaze and I'm met with an intensity. Then it asks me something. It turns its back and continues walking. Do you miss them? Its pace slows. Of course he does. Ache for something lost. It is dark without them. Painful. It turns slightly to glance at me. It's strange how a being made of bone can see so much pain. Yes. How faint memories can become. It speaks as if to itself now, but the torment in its voice is no less. Instead, it only grows. But I wonder how is it this any different? I had thought the longer path would help, so I went with you. How many times? Yes, how many times? Only to make you leave. Yes, right? No hope to the return. Is this the same ending? I don't know how many times you have to hope. You must remember me. I mean, I remember you from last time. Once more the path, you must remember me. Once more down the path. I cannot give you another wound. If I could mend your wounds, instead give them. Life is not my domain. I can only bring you to hurt. I must send you back to the world. It's only ever spelled your end. Some some games are really just very difficult to find the endings for. Like games like this. Oh my goodness. I turn back this time. Am I alone? The forest remains still. Maybe I'll remember something if I retrace my steps. I turn around and start walking back to where I began. Maybe there's a note nailed to a tree that I missed or some warning sign. You're going the wrong way. I freeze. Was I hearing things, or did someone? There's no place for you that way. I gather my courage and answer the voice. My home could be that way. It could be. But you know better, don't you? I pause for a moment to consider. The voice is right. I have no idea where I'm going. I, I don't know. The voice doesn't respond. Who are you? 
You cannot know me until you know yourself. The voice is right. I'll find nothing back there. Why do you cry, little one? Because I don't know who I am. You're home. I look. Yes. It's cold, empty, and terrifying. It just makes sense that nothing would live, live here. Right. It begins walking down the path I have traveled, and I had not returned back. This will lead me home, right? It hesitates. Yes. Um, no. Will we be there soon? It doesn't answer for a long moment. Hello? If I answered, would it ease your fear? Warm. Its hollow gaze turns toward me. This part of the trail is hazardous. It pulls me gently forward, and I'm immediately thankful for its assistance. Ah, I trip on the tree root in the path. I would have fallen over completely if I had not been holding to the creature's hand. Yes, it's the same thing. This goes on for five interrupted minutes. You become hesitant. Yes, I understand. Um, I give it life. It keeps walking. The forest grows more dense if you travel further down the path. Part of the forest is old. I find myself wondering how old it is. It was a gift. I tilt my head and brow furring. Someone was able to give you the gift of life. Um, yes. Um. Come to the end of the journey, glows patient, impatient. I'm growing impatient. Ask about its home. Ask another question. I swell and look down. Uh, will they come back? It turns its back and continues walking. Do you miss them? Yes. It turns to glance at me. It's strange. Yes. How faint memories can become. It speaks as if... T yes. Instead, it only grows. But I wonder how is this any different? How many times? Oh my gosh. I wonder if this game is like tracking how many times I play it. And I just have to keep replaying and replaying to find something different. I don't know. Sometimes it shows us the scene of it holding my face. Uh, sometimes it asks as if I trust it. And then um, sometimes it always asks me to touch the water. I, it's like a mystery I could not solve. I just know that it does not want to send me back to the world of the living. But I keep dying and coming back here for some reason. My memory is lost. I don't remember the sky. Yeah, you can't let me be hurt again. Not ever again. Never again, man. Ever. Just keep me here for the rest of eternity in your cold, damp forest, I guess. This time I say that the forest is lovely. Right. Did I say that last time? I don't remember. Would you be able to tell its truth or its falsehood? I think about that for a moment before accepting that this creature is probably right. I don't answer, but the silence hasn't lasted long. Instead, it asks its own question. How would you describe your home? Yeah, yeah, safe. It repeats the word slowly to itself, mulling over. What? What's wrong with safe? Right. So when I say my home is safe, that triggers me um, asking if I feel safe now. Ah, uh, yes. And I take his hand and he pulls me gently forward and being like thankful. Yes. Sometimes he tells me I want it to. I became hesitant. I know I said I wanted you, so I don't know why I became hesitant. Um, warmth and safety keeps walking and I find myself wondering just how old it was a gift uh, everything's a gift turns back and continues walking sometimes it tells me it tells me what when, where the gifts come from almost he almost told me that the gifts came from me I feel like there's like this I'm just gonna get the same ending again I think I looked out toward the wooded horizon again. The end of what? We're still in your home. You said you would take me to your to mine. 
and stops walking. Its voice becomes barely a whisper, an echo of a deep rumble that has been moments ago, as if it's trying to hold something back. I am. I indistinctively step back. I'm not afraid of this creature. It's been nothing but kind to me. It's hurt in some way and I want to help it. Now oh, this is different. What happened? Why are you- It shakes its head. I do not- Do not concern yourself with my emotions, little one. I will be alright. It takes a step towards me. When I don't move back again, it hesitantly approaches. A clawed hand reaches out and tentatively brushes away a strand of my hair, gracing the curve of my cheekbone. I grab it before it can pull away. I can't help it. I'm worried about you. Look at me. I do, without thinking. Instead of windows to the soul, I see a doorway to the void where I stare into its empty sockets. I have no need of fear, for I am above harm. There is nothing to be. Uh, there is nothing, be it in this forest or elsewhere in creation, that can wound me. You should not worry for me, as you do. Allow me to take you home. I release its hand and silently comply. It places its claws against my forehead. Its sorrow, the fog, the gentle touch overwhelms me. The last thing I hear is a soft plea. Here we are. This is a different ending. The darkness takes me. Remember me next time, my love. I will wait for that day. For you, I would wait for an eternity, over and over again. But for now, fate must once more lead you away. You are some place warm, and I am alone. I solved some piece of this puzzle. So, there has to be an ending where I remember my fate. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I start questioning it. I question if I know him. You have known me for quite some time. And what's your name? What is yours? I, I don't remember. I don't. I can't bring myself to say it out loud. Yes. Right, I don't know who I am. Okay, I feel like I read this before. Oh, someone gave me a gift. Its words caused the breath of my lungs to halt, the chill in the air entirely forgotten as the vision of a warped bare tree comes into my view. A memory? Or is this what's in front of me? Oh, yes. It was a simple gift at first. A scattering of trees to fill the horizon of my home, something to break the torturous emptiness as I wait. A dark tree trunk bearing no green. On the next visit, they were unsatisfied with the color. I was given leaves. A full canopy coats the sky and branches, a painting of wilderness in their existence, without wind, for the underbrush remains as dark as the path. Unsatisfied, still they lament the lack of brush, bushes, bushes, vines, moss, mushrooms. The underbrush that completes a forest. The horizon is painted further with flora. Hues of green cascade down the branches and the path below is overrun with beautiful shades of life. Oh, I wish I could see them better, but the forest remains dark under the faint glow of the moon. Light, they said, on the vis in the next visit, to better see the path. Um, a creature that would travel with me while they were away, lest I be alone to wander my home, my forest. They gave me wisps. The air thickens, and the being's hands tighten ever around its staff, as it remains impossibly still. Yes, little one, they gave me these wisps. That's the very kind of them. They have a kind soul. The tree fades from view and I'm left alone with being, the being and wisp again. I hold one in the palm of my hand. Once more, and the sense of connection is even more overwhelming than the last time. Come, the end of the journey grows impatient. I'm almost home. A soft sound. Yes, you are almost home. We walk together 
In silence, a quiet broken by the sound of our footsteps, I find myself wanting to pry deeper to ask my own questions, to remember who I am and what this being is. Will you take me? Tell, tell me your name now. A deep rumble echoes through the woods, akin to a light chuckle. I have told you, little one, you cannot know me until you know yourself. Ask something else. Oh my gosh. Please, don't do this to me. Just as I start, a realization snap natches the rest of the sentence from my lips. I know now. I've been in this forest before, and I met this creature before. My hands tremble. I don't know when I stopped walking. I don't know when the forest gave way to the field before me, offering me an escape from the fog and the chill that coats the undergrowth. But I do finally know who I am. I am assailed by a thousands and hundreds of thousands of memories, countless lifetimes that I have lived, loved, lost. I was a gardener, my gentle hands tending to the herbs of my soil, always encouraging growth. I was a baker, rising with the sun and stroking the flames of the o oven, crafting the with dough and a joyous song. I was a mother, a father, a daughter. I was held. I was a held breath. I was running through the rain. I was the sun's warmth and the winter's frost. I was life. I look up. The creature is, impossib is impossibly still before me. It would be holding its breath if it could breathe, but it can't. Breath is a symbol of life, and this thing, this thing isn't life. Your name is Death. Yes, little one. At last, you know yourself. You. It stops for a moment, its claws tightening around its staff. You are the final soul of life, um, it looks away, and the fog thickens, and echo its sorrow. I, I step closer to it, my hand reaching out instinctively to offer the same comfort it always given me. Its gaze become fixed on my hand, a careful trepidation, as if it doesn't quite believe that I remember. But I do remember. I do. We are at the end of the path now. I know. Then you know you must go home. There cannot be a world without you. I know, but... I'm scared. Why? Because it's going to be different this time, isn't it? It will be. As life's final soul, you will have completely completed the cycle and thus begin and anew. All will return. All will reset. It will be a different dance to the same tune. You will learn its steps within time. What if I don't? What if I can't learn the steps? That is impossible. You fear that you are not enough. You are life. It is in your nature to preserve, uh, persevere, and you, you are always enough. Um, you must go now, little one. Goodbye. And I promise you will be okay. Well. Wow. Found another ending. Lovely. I think there are four. Let me check. Okay. Um, if you want to find the fourth ending, please feel free to do so. Feel free to come and play the game and find the fourth ending. Because I'm scared that I'm never going to find it, no matter how long I play this way. Why? 
because I've been playing this game for a long time now. But it, it never changes. It, it is going to be different. No, it won't. You keep saying it will be. Yeah, you have to begin the new this game 20,000 times to find the fourth end. And we'll return. And all will reset once again. A different dance to the same tune. Yeah, I've been dancing this tune for a while now. Think of it, every possible combination that my mind can conjure. I did not write anything down or anything. And if I can't learn the steps, then you know, at some point, it's okay to call it, to call it, and say you got three of the endings that you were looking for. So that, that is good. You know, three out of four endings is fair enough. I. I'll show you something. I'll show you what I've been striving for this whole time. Goodbye, Def. Adios, Defaruni. You'll be okay even when you die again. When you die again, you'll be okay. You'll come right back here and this. Whatever this is, good luck finding it. Because we are. Uh, I can't, for the life of me, find find the fourth ending, and I'm sure, I'm sure this leads to the fourth ending, whatever it is. So, good luck with that. Um. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, I feel like I read a lot of the things multiple times. And I'm too lazy to change that. So, um, if you listen to it all, thank you. Much appreciated. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.